Okay, now let's start writing some Java syntax. I'm in the JDK bin directory, and I'm going to start the JShell executable. And I'm in the JShell prompt. I'm going to start with a simple variable declaration and assignment. So let's say I want to create an integer called i and assign it a value of 10. This is a line of Java code, right? This is Java syntax. I can run a piece of Java code like this in JShell and hit enter. And now there is a variable that's created called i and it's assigned a value of 10. Now this brings up a bunch of questions. Where is this variable? What is the class that it's assigned to? So hold that thought. We'll get back to that in a little bit. But then what I want to show here is now the variable is created. The variable happens to be an integer. It's an int. And then it has a value of 10. Now I can echo that variable by just typing that variable name and hitting enter. And now you see it prints out the value of that variable. Now I can create another variable, int j equals 20. And I can actually skip the semicolon here at the end. I don't have to specify a semicolon for these kind of single line statements. If you work with Java, you know that this is not cool when you're writing an actual application and you're writing a Java class that the compiler is going to parse through. The compiler is going to complain that the semicolon is required. But guess what? In the case of JShell, you don't have to have semicolon, at least for these kind of one line statements. So here I can type int j equals 20. Without the semicolon, I hit enter and it has the same effect. J has been assigned a value of 20. Here you see this echo, which confirms that what you've entered has happened. So it says this is a variable called J, and this kind of uh, double equals in an arrow points to the value that it has assigned. So I can type J here again. J is assigned the value of 20, and I is assigned the value of 10. I can create as many variables. I can, you can create strings. String str equals hello world. And now str has the value of hello world. And I can, of course, echo string, and it is going to print the value that's hello world. Another cool thing about JShell is it has autocomplete. So let's say I type in s, and then I type tab. It fills the available options for me. So I just press tab here. Now here you see it shows a couple of options. So one is shard, so I can type shard, and it is going to be a starting point for declaring a new variable of type shard. Or I can type str, which is going to be the the string str. Or I can type sundart, which is the start of a package name. We'll look at packages later, but it does provide autocomplete options. So let me give you another example. I'm going to say string my long string name equals foo. And then I type my and then type tab. And it you see that it auto completes. Another thing I can do is split into a declaration line and an assignment line. So let's say I do a int k. So I'm creating a variable called k, which happens to be an integer. And by default, it's assigned the value of 0. And now I can, in another line, k equals 40. And now k has the value of 40. So it's basically Java syntax that you can have an intuitive feel for. You know that these are valid statements, and they work just as well in JShell. The thing where it gets a little bit different from your typical compile time scenario is that you can actually redeclare these variables even though you've already declared them before. So for instance, here I have an int j equals 20. Now I can say int j equals 30, and now j is assigned a value of 30. This is not possible when you're writing Java code in a class file. You cannot redeclare variables. Every variable can be declared just once in a given class, in a given context. But you can redeclare in JShell. It's not just that, you can redeclare with a different type. So for instance, I want to call, I want to create j to be a string. I can actually redeclare j as a string. This would com this would fail in a compile time scenario, but here it works fine. J has now been redeclared as a string. Now, what happens when you redeclare in JShell is that JShell actually reapplies that declaration and assignment. So, with what this does is it basically overrides the previous declaration. So now, if I just type the value of J, J is now a string, and it has the value of hello. So whenever you redeclare a variable, it reapplies it. So it's essentially getting rid of the previous declaration. So all this stuff is essentially JShell forgets about that and you have recreated the variable j as a type of string and with the value of hello.
before we wrap up, I'm going to tell you that you can reuse these variables in your expressions. So we know that i is an integer and k is an integer. So let's say I create a new va variable called l, which happens to be an integer, and I'm going to make this i plus k. And now l has a value of 50 because it has added 10 and 40. What is important to remember, though, is that the variables that you use have to have been declared first. So if you were to use int m equals i plus a, a is not declared. A does not have a declaration. The shell doesn't know what a is, so it is going to give you an error. So you have this arrow pointing to a, which is that it cannot find variable a. So when you're using a variable, you have to make sure it has been declared first, but you can technically declare multiple times and each time you declare it reapplies that declaration. This is handy because when you're writing Java code, when you have a dart Java file open, you can go back and edit the code. Here editing is technically possible. We'll look at that in a future video, but this makes it a bit easier to kind of play around with an experiment. You don't have to commit to a variable being of a particular type. You can change things around and it's all fine. JShell doesn't care. Whatever is the latest uh, declaration is what gets applied.